Good afternoon, everyone. Okay, good afternoon. Thank you again for joining us. And welcome to the Blue Green Digital Innovation Challenge webinar. My name is Vinel Kalamua Taylor, and I'll be your moderator for today. It's a pleasure to see you all online joining us today, as we have a group of esteemed panelists from across the Caribbean who will be sharing their experiences and their ideas about their digital and innovative solutions. Through this webinar, we seek to share with you the importance of capacity building and mentoring, and you will get firsthand knowledge in seeing the examples and importance of digital and innovative solutions in agriculture and fisheries. This webinar is in partnership with the Ministry of Agriculture, Lands, Fisheries, and Cooperatives, as well as the United Nations Development Program through the support of the Climate Resilient Agriculture for Integrated Landscape Management Project and UNDP Accelerator Lab and the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. So we have a number of panelists. We have about four panelists who will be sharing their experiences. And if I can have the agenda shared so that you can see the progress and the procession for today. Our first panelist will be Nakisha, Ms. Nakisha Alexander, who is from De La Grenade Industries, who will be sharing her experiences. Her presentation will be done by Ms. Am Amana Hosten, who will be presenting on her behalf. And Ms. Amana, are you ready to present? Yes, yes, I am. Permit me to share my screen. Okay. Second. Okay, so on behalf, can everybody hear me? Yes, okay. hear you. Yes, good afternoon to everybody. I'm going to be presenting on behalf of the La Grenade Industries with Nikisha Alexander. She apologizes, she could not, she is not able to present at this time, but she can entertain afterwards any questions in the Q&A box or in the chat that panelists or um, attendees will have about the project. So very, very briefly, um, Lagarat Industries is an agro-processor of food and beverage products, namely syrups, preserves, condiments, sauces, and those numerous things. And these are made from various herbs, fruits, and spices that are grown in Grenada. Um, to most Grenadian persons, the name de Lagrenade Industries is pretty well known. On to my next slide. So this company operates a community-based model, which currently has 15 employees. 12 of these employees are women and it's a woman-owned business. Most of the fruits and other agriculture produce utilized in the agro-processing are sourced directly from farmers in surrounding communities. So the challenge that the Lagrenade Industries had was to promote and sell their unique and award-winning products globally. Um, what you see here in the, in the photo is one of their products, the nutmeg jams, which is widely available, of course, locally, but of course the challenge is to have that name be, um, be known, be well known globally. So the solution under the previous call of the digital challenge 
that they, they applied for was to apply, implement a digital marketing strategy using digital marketing products, whether it's updating their web platforms, um, development of digital sales platforms, as well as engaging in digital communications management for the harvesting and collection of raw material from community come from community-based farmers and suppliers. So that is what was previously applied for. I believe they applied for the full 30,000 US. And in addition to some of the digital marketing things that are put here, they also um, applied to kind of improve their production by having an automatic bottle washer to improve the product, um, improve the productivity of their business and to put out more products onto the market. Um, that is the end of this presentation. So like I said before, if you have any questions, um, you can utilize the chat function or the Q&A function to ask Ms. Alexander your questions directly. I think she's more than happy to give you supporting information if you have any questions. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Amana, and just repeating what you had said concerning the questions. We have uh, this roundtable discussion where you can place your, your questions within the Q&A box. And those questions, the, the panelists will be able to have access to those questions and we will be able to answer them. Thank you again, Amana, and so sorry, Nakisha, that you, you were not able to present, but Thanks so much for this presentation as we get to learn more about De La, De La Grenade and their products and how you use digital marketing strategies in terms of moving forward. Right now, we are going to have Mr. Karan Bascom and Mr. Sorry, please give me a second. Yes, Mr. Baskin is an Agri journalist, mobile content creator, and founder of Tech for Agri, a social enterprise based in Trinidad and Tobago that uses digital media, journalism, and communication services to support, inform, and empower stakeholders in agriculture and related fields. Tech for Agri is the first entity to innovatively use mobile tech media and info sharing, being able to connect with ground level stakeholders as they seek to meet the stakeholders' developmental needs locally within the Caribbean region and internationally as per the nature of their fields. Tech for Agri has a solid foundation having supported Agri-Youth as a blog since 2011 and making the leap to social enterprise in 2014. After the creation of the blog, Mr. Karan began volunteering for organizations such as plantwise.org and Global Agricultural Development Initiative. Soon he, be he began freelance work as a correspondent for Fresh Fruit Portal, CTA, Spore Magazine, and REN Media. Through continued work as a social reporter for conferences such as GCAR2 and ICT4AG, both on site and remotely, he was able to improve his skills. Further complementing these field experiences, Karan sought out and earned field-based development opportunities with Online News Association and the International Federation of Agricultural Journalists. These experiences and more allowed Tech for Agri to offer services in social media consultancy, development training, journalistic work, mobile video production, and facilitation services. Over time, its founder, Karan, has advocated for youth through service as a past president of the Agribusiness Society of UE, country representative and steering committee member of the Young Professionals for Agricultural Research and Development, YPARD. As the youth local representative for the steering committee of the Global Forum for Agricultural Research, GFAR, among many other roles. Karan is also an alumni of the Young Leaders of the Americas Initiative Fellows, a professional development program by the U.S. State Department. Karan aims to continue his advocacy work given the state of our post-COVID world. In pursuit of equality and access to financial and other business services, 
for small business owners and entrepreneurs. He now serves on the Leadership Council for the Entrepreneurship Hub of Trinidad and Tobago to eliminate those barriers that prevent honest livelihoods that he has chosen. Apart from his efforts with the social enterprise, Karan's activity pursues other entrepreneurial projects, Tech for Agri360 and the Agri Recovery Kit. Mr. Bascom, you can go ahead and make your presentation. Hi, thanks very much. I didn't expect that you would read the entire profile. <laughs> I thought you would edit it. I was trying to be humble. <laughs> Usually I'm very humble, but you don't make me sound humble. <laughs> all right, but um, thanks for providing all of that. That is literally the entire background. So I can focus my presentation, which is, isn't very long at all, on Tech for Agri 360. So what it is, is that, um, I was asked to provide you all with like real life examples. So the challenge I've had definitely, I mean, all of that sounds nice, but I've had to do those things in order to build the business and to build my organization because there's this fear of technology and digital um, locally. And I would assume it's the same in other parts of the region. So what we are saying is that we really were pushing something that was useful before the pandemic came. And now that we have pandemic and all of its effects, everyone is all talking about digital transformation. But now we have an advantage having spent 11 years pushing this work that nobody wanted and people still are afraid of um, and still don't know how to use effectively to say we really want to assist and contribute to our agri ecosystem and to make sure it's healthy that we have space for young people to come in that we have our products and our resources being used sustainably to produce the best products and services that could then be exported you know that's our overall we want to have sustainable system for all so we we are building this field in media journalism and communications in the agriculture space and related fields the challenge with that is that you as a business, you need to have your revenue streams. And because of the COVID, we lost some of our revenue streams. So we would have done a lot of work outside of the country, as you heard when I explained, and we lost all of that with COVID. So we needed to make sure that we had more stable revenue streams. And this is where Tech Bank is 360 came. What it is, is uh, we are where we are using immersive media and our agri journalism skills to create a unique learning environment. So we are using 360 degree video, which allows you to see in any direction. And how it works is that we use our mobile devices and other tools to create, uh, to create the videos and then we send it to your phone. And then we utilize something like this, which is, oh my goodness, I don't think you can see it, but <laughs> here we go. I didn't know that would have happened uh, <laughs> because of the color. Oh, here we go. It's, this is what you would call a, a VR, VR headset, right? It's a very simple one. And how it works is that you put your phone inside of it. So this is an old demo box we have. And we felt like we could use this technology to not only support our agriculture sector and make it present it in a better way so that people can understand its importance easier and more in, the, and more in, an, in an educational but more entertaining way. But also we clearly saw a problem where our education system was being disrupted. And we are seeing where our children are not able to go to school, roads were being destroyed because of floods and flash flooding and all of this climate change that we're having. And then anytime somebody coughs, you know, that's it, everyone has to stay home, somebody has to quarantine. So our school, like our whole economy was being based on school. People were clamoring for school to come back. It came back. And then it was just disrupted. Following that, we had thousands of dropouts. We had people just not ready for exams because you spent two years behind. So we felt our project, which was initially meant for the agriculture sector, had a space in the education sector. And so we pivoted and sort of built it. We were already part of STEM facilitating at secondary schools, and we were already testing it there. So we just said, okay, let's go full into education. 
and just have agriculture as a base and on our STEM fields. So I have a video, I've sent a link. I, I guess it could be played now or I can play it if necessary. And that video will introduce you to Tech Biology 360 so you have an idea of what 360 video looks like. And then of course you can find us on social media and be search Tech for Agri, T-E-C-H, the number four, A-G-R-I. I must also stress Tech for Agri is an independent enterprise and we have a lot of people doing tech and agriculture now and agri-tech and all these things. But we are, we are, we have, we are the ones who did the work earlier. So we know what's useful and what's not. So we want to differentiate ourselves and, and say we're independent, autonomous, and progressive. So that's where we are going. It's very difficult. There's a lot of sacrifices and there's still instability, but we have a long-term goal that drives us as a social enterprise, meaning that we do want profits. Everyone wants to make money, but we want to say as much as we earn profit, we have a positive impact in society. And for us, this is basically saving the educational sector. We have to update and upgrade at some point. And this is a good way to start. It's a simple technology because it already utilizes your mobile device. We're simply using it in a unique way. So uh, I guess is the video ready to be played? Should I play it? Um, you can go ahead and play it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I would have to, let me just quickly get on YouTube. One second, very, very, very quickly. Okay, while well, you're doing that, Karan, just to mm -hmm. inform our, our participants that these are the panelists who are presenting are just examples of what businesses can do as part of the CRA challenge. And so some of the panelists are across the Caribbean and would have been involved in different opportunities to help them develop. So we are just giving you some examples and some ideas of what the different businesses would have done and what you can also do and, and see how they have gone through the process and the experiences that they would have had. So I just wanted to, to make that clear. Are you ready, Karan? Yes. Okay. So you can go ahead and make sure that you share your song as well. Mm -hmm. It's asking me about start recording. I was just trying to share my screen. It's not giving me the option to share the screen. Okay. Um can we can we show the video after? Because um, Mr. Dujan, yes, Mr. Dujan has to make a presentation and he has some time limitations. Yes, so we will let Mr. Dujan. Yes, okay, thank you so much. So before Mr. Dujan presents, I just want to give you a little bit of background on him. He is the CEO of Al Gas Organics, the Caribbean's first indigenous biotechnology manufacturing company. Recognizing the crippling effect of sargasm on his home island of St. Lucia, Johanan founded the company in 2014 with the vision of valorizing the invasive plant species into world-class organic crop protection and crop nutrition products. Under his stewardship, Algas Organics has processed over 1 million pounds of sargasm seaweed into fertilizer for export regionally and internationally. Mr. Dujan has been recognized for his innovation locally and internationally. He has been on the Forbes 30 Under 30 in 2020. He has been a Commonwealth Youth Award for Excellence in Development 2019, the Forbes 2019, Youth Leader of the Americas 2018, Prime Minister's Award for Innovation in Microbiology in 2018, Huffington Post 2017, OECS Top 30 Entrepreneur Under 30 in 2017, Caribbean Beat Top 25 Achiever Under 25 in the year 2017, and Young Entrepreneur of the Year 2017. 
Mr. Dujon, you can take the floor and make your presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, I just wanted to share some experiences uh, with the with those attending. Um, so my company sells products to the U.S. and seven markets, seven uh, countries across the Caribbean and internationally. Um, we went through the a different uh, challenge, which is the uh, Compete Caribbean Blue Tech Challenge, um, that was done by Compete Caribbean Compete Caribbean and IDB Lab. Uh, Oh, I just saw my cameras off. Sorry about that. Let me turn this on. There we go. Hi there, everyone. So, uh, yeah, so we we were able to do this uh, uh, through IDB and uh, Compete Caribbean. We were making fertilizer from Sargassum back in 2014. We got that grant in 2020, I'd like to say, uh, when the pandemic hit, actually. And we moved from selling predominantly to very small Caribbean farms to uh, selling to thousand acre farms in the US and uh, you know, supporting some major industries over there. So my, what I'd like to share is just some experiences. Uh, first of all, when you do get those grant funds, uh, understand that whatever you purpose the funds for initially, those are best guesses. You have no idea what's actually going to happen. So be very mindful and don't be afraid to communicate with the agency to repurpose funds if you need to, uh, simply because, uh, you know, it's, it's, you can write a plan down, but when you go to execute it, you're going to really know, um, you know, what's, what's possible and what's not. I'd also say focus outside of, of the region. Uh, the Caribbean is a very small place and we have a very, I find as a Caribbean national, we, we tend naturally to think very small. Uh, myself included, and I've had to break out of that. But you know, your local uh, country or CARICOM is not a sufficient market for whatever you're doing. It's just not going to sustain you. Um, and so, I would encourage anybody who's taking part in this challenge to ensure that what you're creating is viable beyond your local market. Because frankly, if you look at what your total addressable market may be, let's say you have a hundred, let's say you're Grenada or Saint Lucia. Saint Lucia has 180,000 people. You're maybe a hundred people in that might be your <laughs> your your actual uh, recurring customers. That's not going to sustain you. That's not scalable. And so, for, if for our example, we made fertilizer from sargassum, and we were selling to tomato farms, you know, all types of farms across the Caribbean. And when we went to the U.S. market, we were able to sell the same fertilizer to these much larger farms. We used thousands and thousands of gallons of it because we created a solution that was not boxed into serving only the Caribbean region. So that's, that's the second thing. Uh, be, be willing to pivot, understand that business is, nothing is certain and whatever you plan would likely fail and you're gonna have to pivot. And two, focus outside of, of the region. Um, thirdly, what I'd say is that it, it's very important to uh, form relationships again, outside of the, re the region as well. Um, there's a very immature funding uh, 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 ecosystem in the region where, you know, a, a grant is great. We got uh, support from the Jeff Small Grants Facility uh, through Mr. under the stewardship of Mr. Giles Romulus back in St. Lucia. That was fantastic. That's how we actually got our start. So I'm eternally grateful to Jeff and UNDP. But what happens is there's a massive chasm between grant funding and, I mean, we've raised now about a million dollars or more. And there's a huge gap between $30,000 or $50,000 grant and getting to where you uh, want to get to. And so you're going to have to make sure that you form very meaningful relationships beyond just pushing sales because then you have a situation where when those grant funding, when that grant funding runs out, if you don't tap into a large enough market, as I just said, outside of the region, you're dead. Um, I think those would be, main things I wanted to share. Um, I, I do think that this is a fantastic uh, opportunity for, for young entrepreneurs in the region. I would just like to, again, implore everyone, please think big. Um, the agencies like Jeff and UNDP, their, their, uh, their role is as facilitators, but they can do the work for us. And we cannot continue as young entrepreneurs to think small. We are not trees, we're not planted in the region. And again, I believe that the solutions that we're developing 
are to problems that are not unique to the region and therefore the solution should not only be offered to the region because there's just not scale there to make it uh, worth anybody's while. Okay, so with that, I wanna open the floor to any questions and just to, again, express my gratitude to Jeff, uh, Small Grants Program from the UNDP. Uh, they helped us in, we got that grant in 20, 15 or 2016, and it made all the difference. And I really do mean that we're eternally grateful to them. This is an example of um, what innovation can do. Um, you know, when when you when you get support at the right stage. So thank you, everyone. It's been a pleasure, and I look forward to your questions. Thank you, Mr. Dujan. Thank you for sharing your experience and the advice that you have provided to the other to the participants about looking outside of the Caribbean, broadening your scope. Um, just one question, if if you may, do you want to elaborate more on any training or mentoring that you may have received in order for you to, to develop your innovative um, business idea? Um, to, definitely, I have a mentor. Uh, we met we met on Richard Branson's island, actually. That's a very funny story. But I, I have an incredible mentor. And what he shared with me that um, I'll share with you guys in terms of just expanding one's mind, two books a month. Choose, there's different parts of business. So there's operations, there's finance, there's sales and marketing. Uh, you have HR, all, all of the core functions. Choose one function a quarter and you want two books per month, so that's six books in a quarter on that function. So for example, I just wrapped up a book called Psychology of Money, incredible book. Uh, before that, I read the 21, 22 Immutable Laws of Marketing. Before that, Startup Jacob. Before, like there's just, just keep reading. Um, and I think that is really going to, to help. And that's something no agency can do for you. You need to expand your mind and be, be willing to try different things. So that's what I would say, definitely. Read, read. That's been the most impactful thing my mentor has said to me. And find a mentor too, and one that's actually successful. That that's a big thing. Like you want somebody who's a few million dollars in net worth at least advising you, because then you know what are they advising you about, right? So you want somebody who's where you want to be to be advising you. That's that's all I'd share on mentorship. Thank you so much. Uh, one other question from one of the participants. Sargasm is said to have a high percentage of minerals which are dangerous to crops produce. Good. Sorry, my apologies. This was from Mr. George. So he wanted to know a solution to the sargasm issue. Absolutely. So I'll just share my screen if I can so you can see this. Uh, give me one sec. Okay, so this is from Carfa. We do this for every batch of sargassum that we process. We have a patented process. It's patented in the EU, Canada, and North America. This is for the concentrate of our products. And I want to zoom in here. So arsenic, this is as per the EPA 200.1, uh, 200.8, sorry, uh, what's it called, uh, standards. 4.11 milligrams per liter, which is parts per million. You need to divide that by 10,000 to get what percentage that is. So our product in concentrate 0 0.000411. Our process removes 99.99996% of heavy metals. If you look at, uh, so another big one that people are always talking about is cadmium. The concentrate has 0 0.0. Two zero divided by 10,000 again. So non-existent in any quantities that would cause damage to the environment, extremely safe product. Uh, mercury in concentrate, the product has 0 0.00001 mg per L milligrams per liter, which is parts per million, again, divided by 10,000. And I must state that this product is, this is in concentrate. The product is applied at 15 milliliters per gallon which means you're essentially diluting it 252 times. So divide whatever you see here by 10,000 and then by 252, and you'll see how safe the product is. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for your presentation and for, sorry, Mr. Bascom, you wanted to say yes, something? Yes, I'm, I'm 
Hey, I'm able to share the video as well as I was looking in the chat and I saw someone asking about e-commerce platforms. That's a very wide thing. Like you have to literally check to see if whatever e-commerce platform you're check you're going to use for your business actually works with your local bank. It is a serious issue. The poor banking and financial services that are available in the Caribbean region, and it's really bad for our business ecosystem. Now, let me stop you all there. At no point did I ask for a loan. I don't want a loan. I am one of those entrepreneurs, I'll do it myself. Sorry, I'll do it myself. And I don't want a loan. I simply wanted basic, basic services. So that means a bank account where I can trustfully put my money in there. I've discovered over the last six years of my entrepreneurial career that that's just not possible. Yeah. So you have to really, you have to literally try and see if it works for the different options that are available and see what works for you. And um, well, should I share the video? Yes, you can share after, when we have our next presentation. I think Mr. Dujon has left. Yes, I think he has has already left. So we will go on then to the next presentation, which will be so we will have the presentation by Ms. by Mr. O'Brien and Kenny Blanford, and then you can play your video after if that's okay with you, Karan. Okay, sure. Okay, all right. Thank you so much, and thanks again to Mr. John for sharing his presentation. So sad that he has to leave, but we will have our presentation by Mr. Kenny and O'Brien Blanford of Coca Valley Eco Farms. They are natural farmers who are extremely passionate about the environment and using innovative systems to, to improve their farming skills. They love sharing their experiences and knowledge with others with the intention to inspire them to think outside the box to combat the global challenges affecting us. This is a, a father and son duo and they will be presenting at this moment. Are you ready to, to share your screen and your presentation? All right, good afternoon to everybody, and it's a pleasure to be part of a forum like this to share our experiences with others, hopefully, you know, encouraging and, and motivating young individuals to take up those challenges of finding solutions to the, the problems that we face today. And we're quite aware of what those problems are. So we, yes, like mentioned earlier before, Coco Valley Eco Farms, and we're involving a bit of agro-processing, agro-ecotourism, and uh, yes, my son and I, we, we work together. Yeah, and we have one goat as well as part of the team. And uh, what we want to see is that I can be any Excuse me, and, and Mr. Produce helpful by simultaneously regenerating and improving. Sorry, Mr. Blanford, your audio is is breaking up a bit. I apologize for that. I let me quickly run it through again. What we what we looking to accomplish? Yes. Can you hear me clearly? 
No, it is still breaking up. Probably you may have to take off your video. So that, yes. So try uh, taking off your video and let's see. Okay, let's hope, let's hope that works. Yes, you're sounding a lot better. Is it better now? Yes. All right, thank you. I apologize. So what we're looking to do is um, encourage individuals to adopt these methods. And they can be implemented anywhere in the world, temperate countries, anywhere in the Caribbean as well, as a way of improving our methods utilized to pro provide healthy foods and to do it in a way that encourages the natural environment to thrive as well. We cannot escape from providing food for ourselves. So, but we have to do it in a particular way. And uh, we started doing this for ourselves after reconsidering certain things. And, but we're hoping that we can be an example to other individuals who demonstrate to them that we can achieve effective solutions to the modern day problems that we have, climate change and all of that. We know what the list is. So we had the problems, the challenges that we faced is that I love, I love agriculture in general. I also love tourism, but the methods that, the conventional methods that were being, that we were utilizing at the time were, were not, I would say it was not cutting it. It was very difficult and we had to be dependent on all external sources to support our own business. And that can be a challenge. Anybody who's involved in business knows that if the individual that you have to source your raw materials from or anything like that, it totally affects your business and you're dependent on somebody else. But, <clears throat> and the pandemic caused us to rethink, you know, our strategies going forward. So there were disadvantages to the conventional farming, environmental degradation, and the lack of resilience to pest and disease. It was labor intensive and inconsistent in the raw materials and inputs. The cost of fertilizers and other inputs were, were rocketing. And um, we had to face those challenges. So we came up with, um, I had that brainchild in mind for quite a while now, but we actually really it and started implementing it a few years ago. And we've seen the benefits. We've seen the benefits of, of doing that. And um, it made the farm totally eco-friendly, the healthy environment, and the food was healthy for us. And it made the farming a pleasurable experience. It reduced the labor cost and our carbon footprint, our ability to source or external, or, um, totally eliminate the external sources for inputs like fertilizers and fungicides and weedicides and things like that. We cut that out, so the cost of production was much, much less. It almost, I would say probably, I wouldn't say zero, but it's really, really significantly lower. And the products and services that we use as a farm also doing agroecotourism, the quality of our products are much higher and they are more much more marketable. So for any individual, individuals who are to tap into or do something innovative, you look at your circumstances and try to come up with a solution for those problems. Because of doing one of the things is to actually look at what you have at your disposal without having to get too complicated. Start simple. Some of us may be fortunate enough to probably get, be able to get a loan or get a grant from some institution or something, but then it's always good to start off with something on your own. When you can start on your own, then somebody can help you build on that. And when you do that, you keep it simple. You focus on the things that you have around you and you utilize them as much as possible. And there are things that we sometimes overlook that are right at our fingertips and you never actually thought of them, you know, of improving our lives with them. Sometimes our general perception of things that we have around us is that inferior. 
that for some reason that is a notion that is is uh, you know plaguing plaguing us and we need to realize that there are a lot of valuable things right at our fingertips we just have to think outside the normal trend and see what we can do with those things to and build on them so maybe if we have any more questions or we take questions afterwards it's we we could accommodate those questions but that's that's basically it and then O'Brien is going to completely complete the. Yes, yeah, so thank you. My name is O'Brien Blanford, and as a continuation to what my father and co-partner just mentioned, establishing a business is very important. It can be very challenging, and especially when you in a time where most of the operations that you do can be hard they can be feeling what you have to try and do is create a new solution to your problem and specialize it to your specific area which can be very easy to do if you simplify the way that we do certain things and we pinpoint our specific problems and look for simple ways to combat those challenges so for us the digital tools will not involve or most of the practices and innovations that we implemented on the farm, they were not digital. But however, we had to make sure that we created a system that when we did implement future technologies and digital innovations, that this system was properly grounded and that it would survive upcoming tests. Like you have things like climate change, you have the pandemic, for example, which affected our farm, which helped us to see that we needed to make some drastic changes the way that we farm but also what we were able to do as a result of that was after we got that system in place we were able to implement some innovations and one of them you might see in the on the photo in the screen there is a solar dehydrator and what that does is it takes the produce from the farm and you can dry it and then from there you improve your food security and you improve the value of the products that come from the farm. So that's one of the innovations that we decided to implement. And also moving forward as we further venture into the business, we also have an Instagram page that we use. So we use the internet as an innovative way to reach our audience, to market ourselves as well, but also to share the knowledge and the love and the passion that we have for farming with our potential customers and also our fellow farmers as well. And in the future, as we continue to improve, we're also using another innovation, which is a website and a website builder. And all those simple things, which we may not have considered before, they're very significant in starting to build sustainable businesses and businesses that can withstand the tests of the future that they're going to have. So we encourage everybody to when thinking of their innovation to try their best to simplify it to look to the root causes of their problems and start to build and create solutions from the base because when you have a proper foundation and a proper solution at the start then anything you add up to it can continue to help you to improve so i'd like to thank you for that and we will not mind taking any other questions and thank you for being able to present this afternoon Thank you so much, Kenny. Sorry, Mr. O'Brien. Thank you, Kenny, as well, for your presentation, showing how we can use simple, try to implement simple solutions to solve our, our challenges. And thank you for that presentation as well. We will have Mr. Bascom to share his video before we go into the roundtable discussion. Um, part participants are free to share their questions so that the panelists can answer them. Um, Mr. Blanford, you have, you have been getting a lot of interest regarding the solar dryer and the food dehydrator. So Mr. Bascom, you can go ahead and share and share your screen.
Mr. Bascom, is your video playing? Hello, it's it's playing for a whole minute. Nobody is seeing it at all. We, we didn't see anything. It was just a black screen and we weren't hearing anything as well. All right. Is it playing now? No. All right. I'm not sure what's happening here, but I'll put the link in the chat for people to check out. Because it's staying sharing on my end and I'm not playing now and I'm not seeing and you know, I don't know what to Yes, we we will try to see how we can play the video. It won't allow me to share my screen. Um, oh, okay, okay. The only other option is a web link. So yes, so you can put you can put the link in the chat so that mm -hmm. others can have access to the link and and watch the video. Thank you so much. So we will go into the the roundtable discussion and Mr. Mr. Blanford, you're, there are a lot of questions yes. regarding the solar, the solar dryer and the food dehydrator. So can you share further information on that for the participants? Okay. Okay, so it is a design that, is, that um, then again, employing the the technological of it. So I did a bit of research on, on YouTube and quite a bit because, you know, to find one that is appropriate, but we use that technology. And um, I employed a method that, that doesn't expose the food to the direct sunlight. So there are other methods that you can use where there's an open screen. Well, not open, but it's sealed by a transparent screen on, on top. So it could be a piece of glass, it could be some plexiglass or something, and a box that houses the fruits that you want to dehydrate with a few vents that allows for the air with the moisture to escape. But I didn't like the fact that some of those, the UV rays can directly contact the food, which would then destroy some of the nutri nutritional value. So I chose a method that would actually protect the food from that is a little is a little tricky to explain from just um just without a actual um a photo or something like that but i'll try my best it's a it, what it is is a sheet of glass that that it's um uh, a film it, it creates um heat through the greenhouse effect and it's connected now through the standing the upright dark part you see there so as this sheet of glass you share your screen so, and the, the dark part actually is like an oven with racks on it, without insulation. It also allows for the hot air that gets heated up from the area where the glass is with the metal sheets inside to actually travel down. Hot air rises, is a, with the physics we know that, and it travels through the, the food and out another vent that is on the top of the chamber that holds the racks. So it's, it works, it, it, it would uh, depend on a good day of sun, you know, a few day, a couple of days of sun, good sun, two, two and a half, then you get, you can dehydrate. I would be able to dehydrate like 50, uh, 40 pounds, 40 pounds of, of green bananas in that. So it would, it takes quite a bit. It has eight racks in there. So the, the depth, the depth of the, the actual chamber that holds the rack is um, four feet deep and by 18 inches wide. So you can it can hold quite a bit of food. And then with eight, eight racks, so it holds a decent amount. And so it, it allows you to preserve food. And we know in the Caribbean that foods are seasonal. So when you have, you have too much. You know, and it, everything is dumped on you at the same time. So you find means, innovative means and ways of adding value to the food that you have and preserving them, which allows you to extend the shelf life. So that that's what it's it's really you know about. And so we 
the local materials the materials are not really expensive they can be they can be sourced locally and and well it takes a little bit of skill to put them together yourself you know you have to you know do some math do some calculations and so on but it's not impossible it's not the easiest um method i'm um, designed for the solar dehydrator you have to think it through but it's a very is an effective one and i like it because it doesn't actually destroy the nutritional content of the food using that method so if i hope that satisfied the the individual curious about it if i can explain or expound on anything i'd be glad to Thank you. Thank you so much for, for sharing that. Just uh, one other question. Um, did you have any issue that you encountered in, in trying to, to fund, um, to fund your, your, your implementation of the solar dryer or other, other innovative solutions that you would have been implemented? Did you run into any, any issues? in terms of sourcing the funds? I, I'm going to let you know a little bit of information. The, we started with, with um, which is what we have. In terms of receiving funding, we haven't received any external source of funding yet for our innovations, for what we do. I, I, I solely depended on my farm through conventional farming to take care of my family. And whatever bills and whatever is associated with that. But uh, my wife, being a great help, subsidized the income that we receive, you know, to take care of the family. While I, I made a little bit of a sacrifice in deciding to go through that avenue because there was a period of time when we would not any get any income from the farm per se. And we just being realistic, these are the challenges that we can face sometimes. <clears throat> So for the younger ones, maybe you do not have that that probably that responsibility yet. Not be a good time for you to for you to you know make some decisions and, and take on the challenges. But we and I do I do some outside I do some outside work as well, you know, to help support the financial aspect of that. In terms of receiving any external funding from any organization or anything, that would be welcome. But that's, that that has not happened yet. So we just started with the basics that we had and see how we can utilize them because there's a lot of things that we can do with, with the little that we have to start. Sometimes we have the privilege of starting big or starting with the help, but sometimes when we don't have that to our disposal, which is the situations of majority of us, we start with what we have and we have to learn to take small steps at a time and build on that. And sometimes after you start something, somebody realizes that you know this has a lot of potential and they'll be willing to assist you, or sometimes even, even some of us may want to go to a bank to acquire a loan. That's not my favorite part of acquiring finances, I'm sorry. That's just my personal opinion. But if you want to do that, those individuals, there are, they are some times that you can actually present that you already have something started that gives you X, Y, and Z. So you have a better idea as to how to chart your way forward through the experience that you gain through time and starting small. You learn to take care of issues that can arise because you didn't just start big and then they become overwhelming. While growing, you realize what those problems and the issues were, but they were a bit manageable because you started a bit small and then you can build on that. You can, you know, adjust where you need to be, where adjustments need to be made and then build on that. So at the moment we 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 you know continue that's the that's where we are we developing actually our farm has not really come to the way we want it yet or are we not I I don't even consider it to be two thirds of the way yet that's in my opinion it has to be a complete functioning farming system that mitigates the waste in terms of you know the process is continuous there's no waste. One, one waste from one animal becomes food for a plant or, you know, you utilize that and, and their system that works. So that, that's what we're starting where we are now and we just continue to build on that.
Thank you. So, Thank yes. You. Sorry, you had something else to add? No, no, I, I just realized my camera was off, so I just let you know that I'm done. That's okay. Thank, thank you for sharing that and showing how you had to you know, use your own funds, building from the bottom, starting from the bottom and, and, and building up. Thank you so much for that. Um, did you receive any training or mentorship for any of, of the practices or any of the solutions, innovative solutions that you would have implemented? So I mean, I've, I've been at Togai for quite a few years. You're working in the tourism industry for quite a long time and also be, being a farmer <clears throat> for quite a bit of time too. And I, you know, off and on you receive training, but <clears throat> excuse me. Honestly, most of the training that I've received, I taught myself. I educated myself concerning a particular subject or the field that I wanted to, to uh, you know, dive into through the internet. Honestly, the internet is free school. It is free school. And then when we receive that knowledge, that information, what we did was I would acquire that knowledge from, from a university professor. You have people like Elaine Ingham, who is into regenerative farming based in the US. And you find them, and actually you are actually listening to a, a, a university um, professor giving a lecture. <clears throat> it's university education. You didn't pay for. You sat in your living room and you received that. That is at our disposal as young individuals or anybody. You can tap into those sources, digital again. That's where it comes in. So I I love doing research and I love experimenting. So when we took when we take the information, I take different bits and pieces of information from different sources, and I find the common denominator, I put them together, and I experiment with them and apply it to my situation. There were certain adjustments that we, we've had to make concerning, you know, when we when we made certain inputs on the farm. The thing is, initially, I didn't realize that <clears throat> it was so it was so important that we recognize that microbes and fungus they multiply really rapidly in warm temperatures as compared to temperate regions. I didn't make the comparison. But when I received the information, which was based on tests done in a, in a temperate country, I had to adjust that to my conditions. So from experimenting with those, then you realize that your process was three times as fast because of the temperatures. So all those things that we had to take in consideration, but actually the education part of it was actually based on taking information. You go on the internet, you, you do the research, you apply, what you learn through experiments and any results you get, you pay attention to that and you have to be very observant. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Blanford. I will like to pose uh, some questions to, to Karan and also to Nikisha. Just the same question which I would have asked, did you receive any training or mentoring in any way that help you to create your your innovative idea. Come on, you're still muted. Yes, I received training back when Tech Party started as a blog. It was a push at that time um, for Web 2.0 and online communities. So that was when, you know, there were a lot of blogs out there, online chat forums, different websites, different resources, you know, social media was just starting to get to be a global trend. And uh, I always had that interest in social media and I couldn't really find any avenues locally or regionally to assist me, but an organization called the CTA, Technical Center for Agriculture and Rural Corporation, had this training in Web 2.0 and social media skills and things like that. And I did it and I did well. And at the same time, I, I helped myself by listening to one lecturer who was the better lecturer amongst all of them for my master. 
exchange program. I did the exchange program twice and I never even finished the master's. That's to tell you that I realized, hey, uh, this master's may not be that useful. I got this training. I got, I, when I did the exchange program, I did courses in, at the time it was called print and electronic media design. So, you know, it was way before Photoshop and all these other things. So um, I really was able to catch the training when it was happening, it was very widespread, but I was one of the few people that would apply to these things. And I realized after becoming a winner and you know, I earned my way to the exchange program, I learned a lot and then I became a winner in this block competition. So instead of going home to Trinidad, I went straight from the USA to South Africa and met other young people just like me doing the same type of work, realizing that uh, there's a whole career in agri-journalism and communications, and I just continued to pursue it. So I know that getting grants and finding support is very difficult, but when you are doing something good and you are putting yourself, competing with others around the world, you get good at it. So we would get opportunities every, like two or three opportunities to travel every year for, few years that we really built my exposure and we did those things in other fields. So not just agriculture, you know, we have journalism networks and, you know, media networks. I have networks where I work in advocacy at the high level and then networks where I work at the ground level because I'm an agri-journalist and I need to talk to the people that are being affected by whatever particular problem in order to report on it and so So it's, this training was what started me off. And I that was like self-encouraged. I did this myself. So when I had that, I did it, tried, and I got this reward of exp expanding my brain and expanding my knowledge. I felt like this was the best avenue for me because I was not satisfied with school. There were not any job opportunities. And I really did not want to go along with the general, you know. Somebody like me is expected to have specific roles in society. So I must be a security guard because I'm the, you know, and that, you know, I must be in the services. I don't want that. I, right now in Trinidad and Tobago, they're offering 4% to the public services. And one by one, people are just taking it. The services are taking it and I don't want that. So I want a proper livelihood where I know my work is contributing. So if I know as a journalist that I'm okay, almost, not almost, they are starving because they don't have jobs or they can't take care of themselves properly, then my job is to spread the knowledge so that you can take care of yourself properly and create your own job. Yeah, so that we don't have that self-dependency syndrome. That's very, very permanent. It's very, very, very um, heavy in Trinidad and Tobago. I don't know what it's like in the other islands because I don't live there. I visit the other islands, but when I visit, I have one. I don't usually talk about, you know, what super problems people maybe have at that time, unless I'm with. Yeah, so it's a challenge here to see, still push your business despite having the, these types of positive training experiences where you have the skills. It's like a double-edged sword now. You have the skills, but because people are afraid you are now seen as a threat. So it makes it difficult for you to bring your stuff forward, especially in my realm where there's a lot of technology involved. But I mean, things are changing. We are in a different world. This is an innovation challenge. So time for new things to happen. And so think outside the box. You really do think outside the box and what it is you are doing. And you go through it, you go through your ups and downs. As, as the other presenters. Thank you, Karan, for sharing that and stressing how you had to do a lot of self-motivation and, and that push and wanted to go, not the traditional route, but creating and, and creating a path for yourself. So thank you for sharing that. Did you have any, any mentors along the way who would have encouraged you, anyone that would have given you advice and direction? Well, to be honest, I have had mentors and I 
I would say I, I've had mentors and I've had persons where I realized, hey, you know what? I should, probably shouldn't be trusting this person, this, this older person, to be honest, because they, you have to watch out for losing yourself. If you have a vision and you have a direction and you're seeking information and support from a person, you have to listen to what it is they're saying to you and really match it up with what it is you are looking for. It's okay to, to meet somebody and for them to have them. Say, hey, I want to be a mentor. I want to spend time with you. I want to teach you things. But really, are those things going to be useful to you? Really be focused on what is your business? What is the core of your business? What drives it forward? Any business, it doesn't have to be a social enterprise. What is the core of your business? What is the main values that drive it? Is it profit or is it supporting a community? Is it solving a problem? Focus on that and stick to that. And then you are the one who is doing the work. So you have to figure out where is it? How can I achieve what I want to achieve? And you go and you, you try your hand at X, you do your information, you build up, you, you know, find means and ways to bring whatever you're bringing from idea into reality and test it out and just be mindful of those who may not want your success. Like I've had that where you're engaging with people, you think you can really count on them and you've known them for a long time. And then you start hearing things that are just not really making sense. And you realize you're gonna have to face disappointment. Not everyone that professes to be your mentor wants to be actually help. That is an important lesson that I think I must mention. Apart from that, the other flip side to that, nobody told you you had to have one mentor. I guarantee you I have a, probably 20 something people or somewhere between 15 and 20 who are not, and, and a lot of them are not from Trinidad and Tobago. You know, they, they are not, how could they be? If it is I'm doing digital agriculture, uh, and I'm doing media, I'm doing journalism, I'm using mobile, I'm using tools that our, the mentors that are available for me here in Trinidad and Tobago, let's say at the University of the West Indies or some other place, how can they have I would like to do social media research. When you do your graduate thesis, it should help you, right? It should help a community. And I want to do social media. We're seeing the world using social media and there was just absolutely no lecturer that could help me because they don't know social media work, they don't. And that's the reality. And it's a reality that those lecturers did not want to face. And so I had to find other people when I, if I go on a, on a conference and I meet people, if I join networks and join organizations like International Federation of Agriculture Journalists, in the Global Forum for Agriculture Research, when I engage with these entities, I met persons that based on how they treated me and what I was looking for, I consider them mentors, all right? You know, you, you know a mentor when they say something to you that resonates with you. So I've had mentors point out things about me that I just didn't realize. So, so to a, a way to describe how I operate in the professional space, I would say, is that I have quiet charisma. I wouldn't have known that I had quiet charisma if my mentor didn't tell me that in a very, very long one time message. <laughs> you know, like that it wasn't like we sat over dinner and we had steak on or, or we, whatever. Like we were talking on one time and we were talking in such a flurry. And in the middle of your flurry, you point out something. That I a, 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 a strong trait of mine that I didn't know I had, and that's when you know you have a mentor. If your mentor says something like along the lines of, "You'll get to expose yourself and you'll get to learn," then that's not a mentor, because a good entrepreneur is always learning anyway, and a good entrepreneur knows that they can't learn everything and that they need to narrow it down. So that's my advice when it comes to mentors. Um, let me just check the chat. I see, I don't know if there's anybody questions or anything on this. Just check it. Okay, yeah. But that's my advice when it comes to mentors.
Um, okay. I see a question in the chat. There's a and there's a new digital solution that provides free knowledge sharing and innovative support for agro processors and agro entrepreneurs qualify for this grant funding. I, I would guess it is, but I'll let her um, you know, answer. But um, I know it's it's a it's a it's a competition. So you have to apply and see. But we know. Thank you, Karan. Thank you for, for sharing your advice. And also sticking close to your core values and, and pushing what you want to see out of, of your business. Um, with regards to the question, I will ask Ms. Carissia Hobson if she may answer the question that is in the chat. Does any new digital solution that provides free knowledge sharing and innovative support for agroprocessors? and agro entrepreneurs qualify for this grant funding. Thanks, Winnell, and thanks for the question. Um, the short answer is yes, if that solution is coming through the agro process or the agro entrepreneur, the funds under this challenge will be shared with the, ag the person in agriculture, so the agro processor, the agro tourism operator, et cetera. We are not giving monies to digital companies. So that's one clarification we need to make. The funds are for um, persons in agriculture. We are encouraging those persons in agriculture to make partnerships with persons who have those digital solutions, run digital businesses. And that is where that fund sharing will, will occur. But the funds will be transferred. So in order for the solution to be considered, it has to be with the expectation that there is an agro processor or agro entrepreneur who will be applying for the funds. And I hope that answered the question. That is based in Grenada. Back to Thank you, Eno. Thank you, Carissia. Thank you for sharing that. And I hope that answers Laura's question. And just to just to share what Nikisha had had regarding the question of mentoring and receiving training. She had built on her personal experience and mentorship from directors within De La Grenade Industries. And she, rec she recommends ongoing reading and research on pertinent material for business growth. And also build your networks network of supporters and, and maintain, build and also maintain relationships. So she also indicated that each entity is different and there are different challenges as well as different solutions. So thank you, Nikisha, for sharing that. And again, Nikisha is unable to, to speak at this time, but she is able to answer your questions. So you feel free to, to ask your questions within the question and answer Sir Box. Just one more question for, for the panelists. Well, Mr. Blanford would have already answered this question. So to Mr. Bascom and to Ms. Alexander. So what issue did you encounter in terms of funding your innovative, your innovative solution, innovative or, di or digital solution? And how did you overcome? How do you overcome this, so, this issue? So the, the main challenge is funding, yes, but there's a greater challenge in just accessing, as I was mentioning earlier, those basic services. So when we started it, when Tech Factory started, it was all voluntary. I was just trying to make agriculture more interesting with writing about technology, and I just kind of got obsessed with wanting to make the articles look good. And I, I ended up having that passion for it. So I knew that I was pursuing something that I wanted to do, you know, like I, like many other young persons when they, if they go to school and they come out of school or what have you, they don't know what they want to do with their lives or with their career. So I decided that I am going to pursue this. And so I had a direction and a goal and it's only in 2014 that I say, okay, I'm after three years, I'm gonna make the leap and say I'm gonna 
stop working <laughs> and not bother to try to this. And so we got registered and in 2016, we had a little team. And so since then, it's been a rocky road because you have these instances where you are, you know, you have a buffer for your livelihood and then in other instances where you don't. But I basically stuck it out. And by 2019, I had built up some scenes and I was trying to see, well, how could I move my business forward? And then, well, I unfortunately had personal problems that really dragged me down mentally. And so at that same time, I came to some realizations I'll never get this specific support that I really need. So I'll just do this myself and then the pandemic hit. So for us, it's always has been uh, an up and down thing. And throughout that period now is where we realize that this is our product. This is our service mix. Out of our services, let's say we're doing mobile video, we have we would get X jobs for the year at a certain time. Well, so let's say out of three months for the year, we would get jobs that would, you know, cover our bills and cover our livelihood, et cetera. And then later on in a year, we would be with a grant. So it's where I would know when I apply to a grant, I've been good at them. So I would only apply to grants where I think I have a strong chance and put forward a strong application and that's still a lot of work. You would probably end up doing about five to 10 grants for the year. And you probably have only chances, real chances of winning two of them. And so we were fortunate that every so often we would get a grant. And these grants would then really give us a little buffer to deliver work, produce work, and then earn from it again, et cetera, et cetera. So we still have that capital issue. It hasn't gone away, to be honest. But we have been moving things forward. And now we are at a point where we've created something so unique that we can not focus on our services, which has this instability and focus on this immersive media service that has a product attached to it, all right? So this um, headset that I showed you, it's um, we actually have a product that comes with a subscription. So it's a whole different ball game for us. You know, we are able to, to not only make that impact on a mass scale, but really and truly have a stable revenue stream. And it has taken us, if I take into consideration all the voluntary time and all of the sweat equity and the time it took to actually say, yes, I'm going to start pushing, it's over a decade, you know, that I've been doing tech bad. So if you're, you know, pushing this entrepreneurship route, know that you are on your own journey and it is going to take a lot of time. Thank you, Karan, for sharing that and sharing that you have to stick it out. And the journey is not an easy one, but it's a rewarding one because you know it, you have created yeah. something from the ground up. Yeah, so thank you. Definitely. Thank you for that. I just have so we will wrap up this session and I put this question to our other panelists. What piece of advice would you give persons who are interested in applying to this challenge which we are we are sharing? Any advice that you would give? So Mr. Blanford, Karan, Nakisha, anyone as we wrap up this this round table discussion. I don't know. I think I, I think I gave so much. I think I, I gave away all the, all the good stuff. <laughs> um, what else is there? What else? I really want to stress that I don't know how it's something that I take for granted the traveling and the going and going and do all these things. I It, it became unknown to me because it's a norm for the rest of the world to pick up yourself and put yourself in a different environment and be confident and capable in yourself to deliver whatever work you have to do and take care of yourself, et cetera. So 
So I would say, know that the world is bigger than you really think it is. You just need the right tools and the right skills in order to access the world now. That's just how it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, the world is huge. And uh, as much as things seem crazy, there's that craziness and that uncertainty provides opportunities for you. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you, Karan. And I just want to, yes, go ahead, Mr. Blafford. Yes, I uh, I think I have a little piece of advice I would like to share for those looking to apply and those who have already applied, that you have to realize, take into consideration your environment, where your business or your innovation will be implemented, what solution can you provide in your given situation and be very specific to not just what you want to see accomplished but also what you can help to provide and what can be beneficial for the long term for probably your people around you or probably services that you provide for the services of for people that will be traveling to you traveling from you the products that you'll be sending out what you may be getting in all those little things and you have to take into consideration the longevity, also the challenges that you will face with the innovation that you are looking to develop. What will it face in the long run? How will you provide funding for it? Can it withstand certain pressures as environmental pressures, social pressures, all those different things? So not just the benefits, which are can be very rewarding, but the challenges and see if what you are developing will be an allusion to those challenges, benefits, or something that the challenges are going to fluctuate, probably how your solution will live or if it will survive. So that in, take that into consideration, but also be very focused on what you want to achieve and realize that it's not like, I think, Mr. Bascom said and our other presenters, that it will not be easy but you have to stick to whatever it is that you plan and don't be afraid to change or to change your plan because sometimes you realize that you have to adjust certain things so that it can continue to be beneficial to you and beneficial to your vision and your mission and whatever it is that you're trying to achieve. So, yes. Just, just quickly, reality is the reality of the fact is that we live in a world that presents a lot of challenges. Less answers, less answers than challenges. And we have to be prepared. And you might, they might have heard it before, the, the, the participants might have heard it before. You have to be prepared to work hard. You have to make a few sacrifices. You have to believe when you find what you want, do what you love. There are a lot of times then people people take on certain things and they, they're not, they don't go the extra mile because they do not have the passion for it and they're not all into it. Sometimes, People can, there are individuals who can do that and stick it out, but a lot of times find themselves not giving their everything because they don't really have that passion. But when you have a passion for something, you will stick it out even if it looks like it's gonna fail or fall flat, but you, you have that vision and you've seen that it could probably work. So you're gonna try it out. And for the young people, every castle was built starting with one brick, one stone one handful. So sometimes we're not be fortunate enough to have a lump sum of what we need and put things together and it starts working. We may have to start from scratch and that's just, yeah, you can start from scratch and make it work. Give it your best. Thank you, Mr. Blanford. Thank you, the Blanfords, for, for your advice. I just want to to share what Nikisha has also um, added in. In terms of, of funding, it is always a challenge, especially with the COVID environment affected and revenue negatively. But um, she stated that they have been um, beneficiary of this challenge grant, which has really helped and uh, meet their goals to sell on the global market. There are challenges as we, as 
they are dependent on partners, but it is a journey. So she also stressed thinking outside the box for, for the solutions. So that was the input from Ms. Alexander. Well, thank you so much panelists for, for sharing your experience, for the advice, for showing that this journey is not an easy one, but is hard working. And once you are persistent and you keep going forward, you can make it through. And this is an encouragement to all those who are within this webinar at this, at this time. I would like to go into our next, our next session, which will be led by Amana Hosting. She'll be making presentation of the requirements and closing dates relating to this challenge. And before we go in, I want to share some questions that we have received. Mr. Noel has indicated, wanted to find out more about the challenge, if there's any age limit, because he is an agroprocessor from Grenada with established products who have tried in many avenues for funding and has been a challenging journey for small business to really get the kind of kickoff or boost of finance most of the time. So he wanted to know if there is any age limit for this challenge. Also, we have another question about if any information notification will be sent about the next presentation, which would take place. So Amana, the floor is yours. You can go ahead. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much to all the attendees who have submitted their various questions. I think it was a very engaging session and thank you again for your questions. Um, so about, I think somebody asked a question related to the activities. Um, just to answer really quickly, once you have, um, so I guess since you registered for this webinar, we have your contact information. So we will keep you updated, of course, on the finalized dates for the upcoming events. So really quickly, the upcoming events that we do have, of course, we've already had the webinar today, and this will be followed by a face-to-face -face marketplace. And the intention of this marketplace is for agro-processors and agro-tourism businesses to meet up with um, digital and, innovator and innovative experts who can help you bring your solutions for your businesses to life. So. Um, if you have an issue with your business that you want um, that you want to come and get a solution to, or let's say you've listened to this webinar and you have an idea, you just don't know all the details that might go into it, this would be the forum where um, you can network with other um, businesses that are here in Grenada and get some more teeth onto your project idea. And after this marketplace, um, we'll have the submission of project ideas. So um, I will share the link to that online form in the upcoming slides. I think it's the last slide. And the deadline we have, of course, is the 19th of June. Um, we're in talks to possibly um, extend the deadline, but if there's any extension, we will, of course, let you know by email. So if you haven't, if you, by chance just popped into this webinar and didn't submit any information about your email address, I would suggest that you um, let us know your email address and then you will be kept in contact. So after the initial submission of project ideas, there will be a series of capacity building sessions where we'll, we'll be going more in depth into, the, um, into helping you submit a full proposal. So you'll be getting a bit more detailed help more than what this webinar has been giving. Of course, the webinar just touched the surface about what ideas can be um, undertaken under this challenge, but the capacity building, the aim of that is to give you more, even more detail than what was presented here before and to help you um, com complete and detail your full proposal for it to be submitted um, for the chance of funding. And, at the end, of course, you'll have to pitch your proposals at the end. So at the end of this, when the full proposal has been dealt with, then you have the opportunity to present your proposal 
to a panel. And then of course, these ideas will be evaluated and awarded. Of course, keep in contact for the upcoming dates in the upcoming weeks and months. So just to go over quickly um, the basic criteria to be considered for the grants, we already said that you had to be an agro-processor or agro-tourism business. No, there is no age limit or age requirement to apply for this grant, but um, in addition to have being an agro-processor and agro-tourism business, um, you must have a registered business in Grenada. Now, keep in mind, we're not asking you before this process to be a registered business. We will be asking these things at the end of all these events. So at the, at the end of the capacity building sessions, that's when you'd have to submit some information about whether you are a registered business or not. So if you're just starting up and you're, you were already thinking of registering your business and going to the intellectual property office, you have, still have some time to do that. And so we're not asking you to register and then sign up for all our upcoming activities. Even if you're, you're not a, a registered business yet, we still encourage you to take part in the businesses. And if you're an IT innovator, even though you're not directly, well, if you're not directly going to get the grant, you should still participate because you might have a good idea that the business can benefit from and you can be a potential digital service provider to an agro processor that wants to uh, access this funding. And lastly, um, as we said, at a project launch, that business also must have a bank account. And that's solely for the reason that you're, that's the only reason, that's the only way you can get the, the funding is if you have that bank account. So those are the requirements. And finally, you to submit your project idea, you register via the link bit.ly slash innovate agri. And at the deadline, which should be it's originally June 19th, but for extending it, we'll let you know. That's when all the ideas will be collected and then um it'll be assessed for the various needs of the different participants for the upcoming capacity building sessions. So you've already attended the informational session, so you can take that off the list. We're doing that right now. And you just have to submit your project idea via that link, and then you'll be given more information on the upcoming events, including the capacity building workshop. So like I said, if you haven't submitted your, um, there will be the webinar, and there will be the marketplace, sorry, before the submission. So if you want to be notified on that, sub submit your email if you haven't done so already. And then after that marketplace is the deadline for submission of project ideas via this link. And after that, you'll be notified as to the capacity building workshops. So I hope this clarified a few questions that may have come up during this session. And I thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you for sharing that information. So participants, you are informed of all the upcoming events and how to register. Now I will call on Ms. Carissa Hobson to provide a vote of thanks. Thanks very much, Winnell. Um, before I do the vote of thanks, I'm just gonna quickly answer a question that a participant had in the Q&A box. And the question was, can a single participant submit multiple project ideas? Um, the short answer would be no, we would prefer that you package your project ideas, your multiple project ideas into one submission. So you can have several different aspects of one thing that you're, you're dealing with, but packaged into one submission. I hope that provides some clarity with that question. Um, so it's been a really engaging afternoon. I am so pleased with the level of questions and the engagement of the participants here with us this afternoon. Um, it is my job, always the easiest job on the planet, which is to thank everyone. And I really want to start off by thanking our panelists um, Ms. Alexander, who wasn't able to speak, but still provided her, her presentation and, and 
ensure that she was present to be able to answer questions in the chat as they came up. And that's a level of dedication that I think we really need to applaud. Um, Mr. Bascom, Mr. Dujon, um, and the Blandfords, I think, you know, we have a nice cross-section from the region and we really appreciate everyone's um, response to the call to participate here this afternoon. Our intention really was for these presentations to help stimulate ideas of what potential um, solutions could look like for your various enterprises and to know that you are not alone, that everyone is, is in the same boat trying to make it. So we really, really want to thank uh, the participants, the panelists, sorry, for joining us this afternoon and ensuring that you are available to provide feedback on questions, et cetera. I cannot not thank our wonderful moderator, Ms. Winnell Colomo taylor from the FAO team. Uh, she, has a, she agreed to assist us with this activity and we are really pleased. I think you did a fantastic job, job we know, in terms of moderating the, the information and ensuring that the participants hopefully felt as though they were able to get what they needed out of this out of this webinar. Uh, building on that, thanks to the teams at FAO and UNDP. So there are several persons behind the scenes and I will not attempt to call the names. Suffice to say that this project is a, this challenge is a collaboration between the United Nations Development Program uh, through the CRA project, the Climate Resilient Agriculture for Integrated Landscape Management project, as well as the Accelerator Lab uh, based in Barbados. The CRA project is based in Grenada, as well as the Food and Agriculture Organization of the UN. Uh, so we have been working really hard. There's about 20, I don't want to lie, about 15 of us who've been meeting regularly and doing our best to ensure that we are able to design something that is useful for you, the potential applicants for this process, and to ensure that at the end, we are able to actually award all the funds that we have available for to, to businesses and help you help yourselves in the ways that you need to. Um, thank you to the attendees. I think my last check, um, I saw something like 36 or 37 persons in attendance as the highest number at any given time. So I really want to thank you for making the time to come out this afternoon and ensuring that you got some additional information. I am sure that you still have questions and um, we are willing to answer those questions as they come up. We have an email address. You can always shoot us an email if you have additional questions and you feel as though it was not answered in this webinar. But as Amanda pointed out, we also have the upcoming marketplace, and that's an opportunity to have even more questions answered in a face-to-face -face capacity um, as you engage in trying to build out or at least come up with some of your ideas. Uh, I think that the only other person or group that I need to thank is the Ministry of Agriculture and Lands, Fisheries and Cooperatives of the Government of Grenada for allowing us the space and the scope to do what we need to do and encouraging all persons to participate, they've been sharing the information and they are very much involved in, in helping us bring about this challenge. Um, like I said, we have quite a bit of funds and we'd like to ensure that we are able to dis disseminate all of it. So um, we thank the ministry for their partnership on this and their continued support on this activity. Um, I don't think I've missed anyone. If I've missed anyone, I sincerely, I sincerely apologize. Um, but I, but do know that we are still grateful in our hearts for, for all the work and, and support that we've received. Uh, if you check in the chat, you will notice that there is a link. We are asking for the participants to provide us with um, some quick feedback on how you think this webinar went. Uh, we want to ensure moving forward that we are always improving and that we are meeting your needs and that whatever we are doing with this challenge is actually responding to what you, the persons in the field, in the agriculture field, require, and how and ensuring that we are able to support the persons who are in the digital field to be able to see themselves in the agriculture space. So your feedback is invaluable. We would ask that you take a few minutes uh, as you leave this webinar to fill out the little very, 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 very short uh, feedback form. 
And I think that's it from me, Winnell. Thanks everyone for attending. We look forward to seeing you in person at the next event, which is a marketplace. Um, and we look forward to, to receiving your submissions. Back to you, Winnell. Thank you, Caricia. And you have been provided with all the necessary information. So go ahead and apply to the challenge and take note of the upcoming events so that you can participate and obtain further information. Well, Carissa has said all the, the thanks. So thank, thank you for coming on, participating, and thank you so much for this interactive webinar session. So this brings us to the end. Thank you again and have a good afternoon.